Buffalo here and welcome to another edition of the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sibble, Robin Washington, we're all back together in the same room. What did I miss, guys? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was a pretty slow week. Not, not a whole lot going on. I, I tell you, we went through that period where we didn't have all that much to talk about. We kind of we kind of had to strain a little mm. bit. We had to use every piece of the buffalo to get through a show. <laughs> Not now, <laughs> not for the foreseeable future, God. not probably until May. I don't have enough time in the day to put out all of the information that I've acquired over the last few days from basketball and Matt Rule's press conference and everything. Like it's information overload at it this is. point. It is, but that's a good thing. Yeah. Don't worry. You don't, you don't have to put it all out. You have me and Sean. We'll and have I, opportunities. And I will say you guys did a wonderful job, not only with the Trevor Albert stuff last week, but obviously Robin's coverage from Minneapolis was First class, and you were going to go, but we kept you back. Right. Um, just I did in, the gamers, though. Just in case <laughs> another thing broke. But I, I had a family trip. We were in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and I'll never forget that morning, Wednesday, which was about 10 a.m. Nebraska time, 5 a.m. at Hawaii time, that hour. I, you know, I, I wake up every morning. You get one, maybe two text messages. Nothing crazy. You know, but people know I'm on vacation that know me anyway at that point. I had like 37 messages roll in Ooh. in like 30 minutes. Whoa. There was 37. I'll never forget the number. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on? Right. And, and I, I think I called you. Right. I think you did. But there's I, a lot going on. I, I just yeah. couldn't fathom or grasp. So here we are now. Trev Albert's story um, is moved on, we think. But then the NCAA tournament committee had other ideas. So Trev Alberts, as we know, is now the new AM Texas AM athletic director. Nebraska will open on Friday at 550 Central in the men's game in Memphis. And Robin and Sip will be out there for that game against AM. Then the women's team will be in Corvallis, Oregon, and they will play later that evening at nine o'clock at night against AM's women's team. So just when you thought you, you, you'd seen it all, like this Trev Albert story, obviously not going away. Um, it's going to take a lot of, of the headlines and the attention of the week away from really what has been an unbelievable season by both the men's and the women's teams, but particularly with what the men's team did and what Casey Tomonaga did on Friday night against Indiana. Um, and it's going to be a lot of Trev Albert. It's going to be just interesting to see that storyline play out and if Trev is as present at this game or will he kind of hide in a box he should hide in a box he I, won't <laughs> okay you're probably now i don't know if you met i don't know i will say this i agree with matt rule on this it's really unfortunate mm -hmm. what the ncaa committees did it's unfortunate because it takes the it takes a lot of the not all of it but it takes a lot of the limelight off the yeah. players the story is not the team anymore right it's the trev albert's revenge game it shouldn't be. Do you know how unfortunate that it's is? It's extremely unfortunate. This is like the first time in a decade Nebraska gets to go dancing, and all of a sudden everybody's talking about the departed athletic director as opposed to what this team has accomplished and everything that they've worked for to get to this point. Yeah. And it's it's a shame, really. And you know, Matt Rule said as much. And Thank I think you. that he echoed the sentiment of a lot of people within this fan base that, you know, this is about to be the story is about to be about the basketball team, not about. The athletic director and you know of course it was the first question out of the gate after selection sunday it's going to continue to follow them probably through the week until that game is over and that's a really sad deal in my opinion it is it, it really is i hope he stays away i mean i really do i don't know if he can help himself i don't think so either i don't think he can help him i mean he kind of created those seats during the season where he sat right by the floor yes. the ad had never sat there until like tell me that's not happening in this situation well i don't know if he can do that at this point but he'll be around he'll be courtside rubbing elbows doing all that stuff wearing his texas a&m cashmere sweater and uh you know doing the the trev thing now the question is is he going to be at the women's game or is he going to be at the men's game well one would think the men's right because that's where your most donors are going to be and you would people think. you'd want to meet and, and what i'm curious fair. about is if he does do that and the expected flood of nebraska fans that are going to take over memphis this weekend what happens when they see him down there i don't think it's pretty yeah i mean he's gonna get booed yeah and people are gonna yell stuff at him oh yeah <laughs> he might think beale street's safer than the arena <laughs> <laughs> i will kind of clear something up 
as the mayor of Memphis. Beale Street is very safe, Sean. The back alley is a Beale Street. <laughs> now, that might be another story. Stay but in the Beale alley. <laughs> Sean, I am apologizing Not on Beale behalf Street, of but... Beale Street. It is safe. That is a safe area. Okay. It's right. It's right by. The now, getting me. into Beale Street though could be bring I mean, some challenges. Yeah, we don't need to talk about all that, but the yeah the the thing with Trev. I hope your guys are wrong. By the way, I hope he's not there. I do too. Yeah, I hope he's not there. I hope he shows some restraint. I'm not, and I don't know, Sean, what you'd say to this on our on my radio show today. They said, "Are you go, are you going to going to talk to Trev?" No, I'm not going to talk to him. I don't. I'm not going to do that side show. No. I'm there. I'm there to cover basketball. I'm not covering the side show. I mean, I'm not. That's all that is. It's just a ridiculous sideshow. Shouldn't even have. Well, in some respects, like, why would he want to be there for AM? He hasn't been a part of any of their season. Well, that's a good. It'll be very interesting to see if he's there and how prominent he is, mm -hmm. how prominent he makes himself. I did back to our interview with Trev a week ago before all this happened. It was interesting to me that we asked Trev off air, was he going to watch the women? Um, and I think he eventually got there for the finals, but. He was like, no, no, I had something on the calendar. We found out that that's when he that went it. up to College Station. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's exactly right. Down, down yeah, he, south. he went. So our interview with him happened like right before he went to College Station. It did. It was a Thursday, right? Wednesday. Oh, we did a Wednesday. And then yeah. I think he, yeah, he went down there either a day or two after that. Because he, he went down there before he went to the women's tournament. So, yeah. Yeah. And now, listen, now I was going to. I don't know. I, I mean, it's very frustrating. I've voiced my 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 opinions about Trev, the servant leader, um, leaving, turning his back on a, a loyal fan base. I don't need to go into it anymore. Well, and I'll, I'll just say this. I, I had a chance to talk on air with you guys about it. I just go back to the contract that he got. Doubled his salary. When you – eight-year, pretty much, he had to be, like, struck by lightning for this deal not to, like, pay out. It was like a lottery ticket. I mean, it was it was going to be one of the highest paid ADs guaranteed for eight years. And, you know, it was like a coach's contract almost. I mean, it was like really, really better than a coach's contract. And, and it's like, well, he's going to be here for a long time. Like, I, it, when that contract came out, like, there's no way he'd leave, like, months later. Maybe a few years later things change. But yeah. just that alone is where I'm soured by it. Like, they went out of their way to restructure the leadership things around him. Right where he reported to a president. Right. And then they gave him probably the best athletic director contract in the country. I mean, I've, I've never heard of an eight-year contract for an AD, especially of that kind of money. No, it doesn't happen very often if it happens. That guaranteed he'd be a top five highest paid AD in the country. Mm -hmm. So, they, yeah, they took care of him. I mean, he has, he has his – look, we all do. I mean, he has his personal aspirations. It just comes back to – he was only here for two and a half years. That's all he could get Nebraska two and a half years. Uh, that, that's where I, I have a hard time reconciling that. Um, and that's it. He's gone. So I guess he continues to be a story. Um, and, and, and again, it's unfortunate that the NCA did that really unfortunate. Well, I thought the news of the week for me, I mean, beyond that was, Monday when Matt Rule gave his first public comments on the Trev situation. And obviously when that news broke, one of the immediate follow-ups was, well, what does this mean for Matt Rule? And there was mm -hmm. a lot of speculation because he made it very clear that one of, if not the driving for reasons why he came to Nebraska was because of Trev Alberts and Ted Carter. And then now neither of them are here. On Monday, he had a pretty concrete quote about his commitment here. He says, there's so much right about Nebraska. There's so much good. I've gotten frustrated the last couple of days as national people have called me to say, hey, what's your contract situation like? I am here. I am all in. Julie, his wife, is all in. I love Ted Carter and I love Trev and I came because of them, but I came also to be at the University of Nebraska and I've loved working the people that I've met here. We aren't going anywhere unless you guys kick us out. Now, maybe that's just lip service, but I don't know. He seemed pretty darn genuine. He did. I told Sean this summer when we covered a, he had a speaking engagement at the embassy suites downtown and he said similar things and it did sound really convincing now now you would have to go back and listen to what trev said and i think he sounded pretty convincing too so i've kind of I, i'm with you rob i'm always there's always a part of me that goes oh yeah well 
we'll see. Yeah. What happens when well, some other big job calls next right. next off season? I hate to be that cynical and untrusting, but we've seen it. You before. have to be. He's yeah. going to be in a position though to have a voice on this next hire. Where generally, oh, yeah. generally, a football coach, if you hire, if you're hired by a guy. Rarely do you get an opportunity to have a voice for the next guy because usually the next guy coming in is to get rid of you. Yeah. And he'll, this is a unique situation where he could actually probably, you know, between Governor Pillen, probably the Pede family and Matt Rule, you know, they'll, they'll, those will be some of the more influential people besides the Board of Regents and, and the new president, which the Board of Regents will have to hire that, that will make this hire. But that's what I'm intrigued on what direction they go. <laughs> And how much say will rule have or a voice or an opinion? And he will have an opinion. We well, know he that one. he showed it. To, he, mm-hmm. he shared we, it. Today. We know that much about Matt Rule. I think Matt Rule had an opinion that he wanted Dennis LeBlanc as the interim, and that's what they did. And it was the right call. I mean, Dennis LeBlanc is Absolutely. not. He's not going to draw attention to himself. He's not going to go. Over, I mean, he's not trying to get the job. I mean, there was another interim AD situation here where the guy was like almost tr- like using it as a tryout to get the job. Mm-hmm. And then when Trev got the job, he you know, took that guy and put him in the background at that point. I mean, Dennis LeBlanc is doing this because he loves Nebraska and he wants to help Nebraska. He's Absolutely. not going to draw attention to himself uh, with this opportunity. Yeah, how much of a voice will, will Rule have? That's the how mu- We know he'll have a voice. How loud of a voice will he get? What did he say today? That he wants someone who's very ultra-aggressive, mm-hmm. um, has to be a doer um, it, it, because of the changing landscape. The, the landscape – in college football shifts so quickly now um, that you have to have someone like that, very aggressive, um, vision visionary, like Trev. I mean, we yeah. now we we haven't critical of Trev on this in this session, but Trev was a visionary. He did move quickly on his feet. He always was fully aware of the landscape mm-hmm. and how it shifts from week to week. Sometimes, so I mean, and like Rule said, the athletic department's in good shape. I mean, a lot of reason. That's a lot of reason is Trev. Obviously, he's the he's the head of it. All right, we'll pick up this rule spring football Trev conversation when we come back. Uh, you're listening here to the Husker Online Show, and we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett, uh, talking March Madness, talking athletic directors, talking spring football. But before we get to that, this segment of the Husker Online Show brought to you by Eller Brock Norris. Eller Brock Norris has been helping Nebraska business owners protect their purpose for over 120 years with risk management solutions built for local businesses. Eller Brock partners with you on commercial insurance, group benefits, business exit planning, safety, and more. Start thinking long-term with your business and create a risk management strategy to protect, protect it. Are your benefits costs going through the roof? Talk to Eller Brock. Workplace injuries skyrocketing your workers' compensation costs? Talk to Ellerbrock. Help, hoping to retire in the next 10 years and sell your business to family, key employees, or even a friendly competitor? Talk to Ellerbrock. Ellerbrock North is helping you protect your purpose, whether it's your business and the employees in it, your life outside of work, or your future retirement goals. Head to ellerbrocknorris.com slash Online to get your free risk evaluation today. Thanks again to Ellerbrock Norris for sponsoring us here on the Husker Online Show. Okay, guys, uh, I want to go back into Coach Rule. Uh, he, he did say a lot, I mean, and, and Robin nailed it. He, I don't know if there's another coach that I've covered in Nebraska that would have been able to kind of handle that 10 minutes the way it needed to be handled because there had not been a public press conference from the university. Because there's not a president, there's an interim president. Um, Chancellor Rodney Bennett's really not involved in athletics, so nobody had really gotten up on the mic and spoken as a representative of the university until Matt Rule did on Fred, Monday. Fred did, right? Yeah, Fred did on Sunday, but his wasn't nearly as expansive. No, like he got no. straight to the point. Brief. Yeah, yeah, he said that I'm I'm here. I love this place. Uh, this is a, this place is about more than the athletic director. Yeah, and Will Will Bolt. Spoke, brief, but the way rule, I mean, rule conducted yeah, yeah, like he, the press conference, like he was leading the university. Yes, absolutely. He, that's, that's a good way to put it. Exactly. He, it was like he was leading the university. It was very impressive. He took the high road. I mean, he did say Trev's a great friend, not only a great leader, that that Trev and Angie, his wife, are friends. Um, and that, and he said that 
Trev left the athletic department in a better place. He was very complimentary, um, but but he was also very upbeat about the future. And in, and he did basically say, well, he didn't basically say he's this is a critical period. It this is. is a critical hire. The president's a critical hire. The AD is a critical hire because of the. Again, I keep talking about the shifting landscape. So, yeah, Sean, you're right. I, and that, in fact, that's what I was writing for the column. I, I thought he showed tremendous leadership today. I mean, just tremendous. Like he was speaking on behalf of the University of Nebraska. Because everything was. Am more, I wrong? No. Everything and more was like the diplomatic Hoiberg, Will Bolt comment. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, you had Governor Pillen kind of fire off a, you know, a pretty divisive statement about the situation of about the region about the regions yeah. and they're uh, you know and that that's what we don't know like what's the hold up with the president higher i mean well now there's some inf i mean is there a hold up i what i where i thought the governor was out of bounds was this is this president search has lasted 200 plus days that's typically how long they've lasted, not only at Nebraska, but other institutions. It's not, it's not an it's not a unique situation. When they hired Ted Carter, it was 200 plus days. I think it was 216. 216. They they've always been around. And Carter that time. did work through Christmas. Yeah. So it's always been around that time. And I'm I'm just now I'm just merely parodying what Chris Dunker has written in the Lincoln Journal Star. But he said at other universities, if you look at the, the hires of presidents, they're always 200 plus days. They have been, not always, but regularly. Yeah, I mean, it's a big position. Yeah. I, mean, I think the difference is, though, that difference because well. of what you keep alluding to is the, how quickly things are changing right now. And for Nebraska not to have permanent leadership at its two most important positions within the university and within the athletic department is a problem. It's and they problem. need to address it as quickly as they possibly can and right. they need to get the right people in place as quickly as they can that's what rules kind of whole message was is you know whoever we end up hiring we need to get somebody here that is going to be aggressive to keep nebraska at the forefront of this rapidly changing world of collegiate athletics to where you have to be able to adapt not just adapt and react to what's happening but get out in front of it and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that made trev so good was that he was thinking about stuff before a lot of other people were when it comes to like player revenue sharing, oh. when it comes to stadium expansion, when it like getting Wi Fi through the stadium so people can have a more enjoyable game experience, like these types of things that you know were in the back of everybody else's mind. You need someone in that in those two positions to be in line with each other and be able to be forward thinking to keep Nebraska at the forefront to where they are setting the bar mm -hmm. for everybody else because Absolutely. that is going to be the one way Nebraska can compete with the way they're trying to catch up on the field, on the court, and all that stuff, that is one way Nebraska can stay at the top of the list, When it, especially when the haves are further and further separated from the have-nots. I'll well, believe so. the Wi-Fi thing when I see it. Yeah. When there's a Wi-Fi network that can handle eighty or 90,000 phones, I want to see it. So it doesn't handle it very well right now? Well, Pinnacle Bank Arena is a, a disaster. <laughs> I mean, the, the Wi-Fi there. Is, yeah. it, is, it, is it trouble like when you're there? Yeah, and even in my seats, I'm close enough to you guys there. I can get the press thing. It doesn't work for me. Okay. It doesn't work. Like it auto puts me into the press because I have the press login on there from football. Okay. And interesting. Yeah. Just because I don't have any trouble with the press one. I don't know. Do you? Some people do. I don't. Yeah. I have that. I think if you're on a computer sitting there, you're fine. But yeah, some of that stuff will be the stadium project really fascinates me too because why? How much is done? Like how much money's raised? Right. I don't know. How far along are things? So, so Sean, they they're supposed to raise two hundred twenty-five million dollars, and then the private, other two twenty-five is going to come from Nebraska, right? Private donations are two twenty-five. So, how much of that do they have? I know what I've heard, and I'm not going to say the number because it's not it's it's not really something I would report. But I would tell you, I'm not going to say a number, but I would tell you they have a long way to go, and there's there would be no guarantee that they could do it. None. There would not with what I've heard, no guarantee that they could raise the rest of the money. Zero. I mean, it'd be in fact, right now I would regard it as a long shot. I would be surprised if that project goes forward in its original form. And remember, they paid Nebraska Philanthropic Trust. I butchered that word, by the way. Not too bad. Um, 5.6 million 
to lead fundraising efforts, which is essentially about three times more annually than you pay your own in-house fundraisers. So if they don't do what they're supposed to do, do they still get their 5.6 million? <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot like yeah. that to me was an unheard of piece to this, that you have your own foundation, you have your own in-house fundraisers, but yet you're paying someone another 5.6 million to fundraise where, you know, for the go big project, their in-house people led by Matt Davis at the time, they, they raised all the money for go. Big. And it wasn't easy though. It wasn't easy. But they didn't have to pay somebody five point six million right. to do it. Oh, they had Davidson to do it, um, primarily. I mean, Ronnie Green stood up in front of everyone and said, "This project doesn't get done without Matt Davison." Now, as far as that, if if people think we're being too hard on Trev, I mean, he left this monumental project before it got off the ground. Essentially, he's the one who pushed for it. He had the vision. He's the one who probably was a little ambitious and hasty in putting it out. And then he leaves. Mm -hmm. Then he leaves. That's what now that's why I don't like if you say sip, you're being a little hard on Trev. No, I don't know if we're being a little hard on Trev. I mean you wanted to build like a Wrigleyville around the stadium mm -hmm. and a hotel. And I mean right. it was gonna Isn't be that, like a downtown we, district. Right. We haven't talked about that. You know what that was designed to do is you get the university gets that money. Instead of the downtown vent, like the berries and the other, they don't. They, they're they're trying to draw those people to their area. campus, to their area, and then they get a portion of those. Nebraska gets a portion of those funds. It happens. The Atlanta Braves did that. Yeah, so, I've been to that. It's cool. Yeah, but see, berries wouldn't think it's cool. Or works with. I still cool. think that those places would have people at them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the the new places would only have so much availability like uh, it would it would you're taking money though it would be a hit yeah you're taking a hit it's not like you're going to be able to go to this if they built that new hotel they've talked about like a you know wrigleyville's got its own hotel like rob and i let's go have a 230 game let's go let's go have lunch at noon in the in the hotel like i i don't think it would be that easy <laughs> you know like i agree it's really interesting stuff but yeah there's a lot there and how much of those notes and information are going to be shared and passed on to the next person i mean like what is the legacy what is the outlook for this project will it get in front of the regents or will we see an old miss situation here which is where old miss tabled their project and paused things until they got a better understanding and i asked trev alberts that question directly before we knew any of this stuff mm -hmm. and you could tell he didn't really like that question well there's other there's another thing you could do too is you could just scale back instead of being a 450 million to 600 million dollar project 100 go to 150 what, million. okay my question is what could you do just to address the south stadium and make it better like that that would be where i'd start mm -hmm. then That's priority it's the, a good idea the bells and the whistles it's a good idea come with it just come with get, try to try tr start with the south and do what you can with the rest but make the emph emphasis the south stadium get it like our we went through a church deal where we had a fundraise and get a church built and you know, like things like stained glass windows, like we couldn't do like initially because you have to, you know, the, the priority was build the church, right? You know, get the church built over time, add the stained glass windows, add other artwork things, but build the church first. Like same with the stadium. They need, they need that South address where there's one singular concourse. And is there a way to do that? It might be. I know this when we went to when Oklahoma State redid its stadium, I thought it was ridiculous. They had like marble floors. When you went to the restroom, you thought you were in a casino. And I just thought this this is not what you need. <laughs> I mean, I don't need to feel like I'm in a casino. Maybe Texas, some, remember Texas Tech was that way too, though. How nice theirs was. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe some people feel that way. But if if uh if Nebraska's winning 12 games yeah. a year, you don't care if you're peeing in a trough. I mean, look at I Penn mean, State Stadium. Right. Uh, I will say though that yeah, what you need pissed? to you need to be at least with everybody else in that regard. Like you can't have the biggest dump stadium in the How about close to everybody? Well, uh, I mean like the South Stadium is archaic at this point it is. compared to the rest of the conference. I mean Nothing Minnesota's done. facilities oh. like the put South Stadium to shame. Oh, God. Oh. Like so like oh. that is something you need to think about. And like I do think you you need to prioritize fan experience because getting people to come to games has never been harder. It than is right. And you can talk about winning. Yeah, sure. That can solve everything. But in the meantime, no, you got to right. give people reason to 
make all that effort, spend all that money, travel all that way, and have an enjoyable experience when they're at the game and not sitting on some hard wooden bench with no Wi Fi. Right. And in, in new college football, you're not going to win 12 games, for, maybe never. I mean, if you go nine and four, you're, you're mm -hmm. good. If you go eight and six, you're pretty good. Mm -hmm. Six losses. All right, when we come back, we will maybe get some spring football discussion, but man, we're having fun doing this discussion too. So we're, right. we might continue this conversation as well as talk spring, but we have plenty of time to talk spring football. Um, we just had a pre press conference, learned a little bit. Uh, we'll hit on that next. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show. And we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett, as we continue our uh, Matt Rule, Trev Albert, spring football discussion. Before we get into more, this segment, Steve Sipple of the Husker Online Show, brought to you by <clears throat> Larson motorgroup.com if you're looking for a new vehicle go for a new experience at larson motors in nebraska city take a brisk drive today larson motors is one of the midwest only dealerships with all the major brands in one locale finding your new chevrolet gmc hummer ford chrysler dodge jeep or ram never has been easier Start your new experience today at LarsonMotorGroup.com, LarsonMotorGroup.com, or at Larson Motors in Nebraska City. Larson Motors, what do I say every week, Sean? Real people. Real deal. <laughs> I don't know why. When you read this ad. He's like, still on Hawaii. Do you guys remember the um, Lane Kiffin, Florida Atlantic, Owl season ticket commercial? Yes. He's like. That, that's what you remind me of doing this Larson Motor ad sometimes. Bring your power towel. Listen up, Bring Owl it Nation. To every game. Thanks, Ron Prince. I'm going to watch that. <laughs> I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch. Playing it's time there. for you to be the best fans <laughs> in the country. Let's make Florida Atlantic special. <laughs> Owl up. If you are interested in very in strange things sean um okay so where are we going you want to talk some football well yeah we, we we heard from rule on spring ball and a few of the players i'll just say this isaiah or not isaiah nor but jamal banks gonna be a major factor mm -hmm. and they oh, wouldn't have trotted him up there as the no. first player he was the first Telling. player how about that Telling. they brought up the speak yeah how about that but you think about this offense there really is not a lot of established people returning. On the O-line, there is, and then technically at tight end, there is with Fedoni. But there's not – I mean, there's not really an established, like, running back that's carried a big load for Nebraska. You know what? We've never got into something that Rule said about the receivers. He's never, he's never verbalized it the way he did today. He said they were okay against zone coverage, not – against man mm -hmm. sean you, you rob you played basketball sean you played basketball i played basketball man to man was a bear when jerry godowski came out and guarded me one man to man fremont versus columbus glory days it was a bear i was I, I wanted to see fremont in a zone i didn't want to see jerry godowski in my face all day um you gotta have dudes that can beat man coverage mm -hmm. that's one of them and it goes back to your constant gripe about small receivers that sure they're shifty and they can get in out of, out of routes, but what happens when you got a first round corner right Illinois. up in his face, bullying him off the line to where he can't even run that route. Right. That happened way too often in Nebraska it's, over the years. It's not so much a gripe, it's just it's just unrealistic to think you it's can a, win like that. It's a gripe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's exactly the point. And then you look at the makeup of this room. They are look at so much bigger, look at so saying. much stronger, so much faster across the board that they're they're gonna be able to hold their own now in man to man, or Megan. at least at least a whole lot better than they were. Look at Megan. Just look at the dude standing there. Mm -hmm. Looks like Purify standing there. Remember Purify? Oh, his shoulders are huge. Mm -hmm. You remember Maurice by chance? I do. You think he could operate against man to man? He sure could. Well, Nayor is bigger than Banks. Nayor's bigger yeah, than that's Banks. the thing. <laughs> like you, that's Nayor's bigger than Banks. Yeah, the, Nayor's got a seven foot wingspan. Those are prototype Big Ten wide receivers. Nebraska finally has those guys now. They got yeah. multiple guys like that. What excites me is when they throw like those bubble screens out on the perimeter, and you have those guys involved in edge blocking of mm -hmm. those little teeny corners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. it's going to set up. I mean, I'm not saying you're going to get like touchdowns, but you're going to get some really healthy plays on those. But hey, you get Jaden Lloyd out on a bubble screen with those two dudes blocking yeah. in front of you with, with Fedoni out there kicking out. Like, yeah. look out, helps. look helps. out. Helps. Yeah, that's he, how you set the edge. That was you know, interesting, wasn't it? The rules said, I thought it was interesting that he said that it's not just man to man. He, he identified some other coverage that they weren't effective against quarters, quarters. Good job, Rob. 
So, I mean, that was a revelation to me. That was a revelation. Well, 23 newcomers here for spring, yeah. mm -hmm. which that's going to be kind of the norm every year, I think, for the most part, because as signing day has moved itself up, as long as you're in good academic standing, I mean, there are two guys that essentially don't enroll early, or a few, a few groups of people. If, if you're not in good academic standing and you have to go another semester, that, that's an easy why you're back at school. Or you're a spring sport, winter sports guy, like a track or a basketball player. And, or baseball. or ba Not necessarily baseball, but... <laughs> Um, that's in the spring isn't it it could be yeah i'm, yeah. I'm saying because baseball like basketball season could be a big for a high school kid he might want to finish it out and in carter nelson's case he wanted to do track too oh i see what yeah um you're 100 right and then obviously if you're a late guy like um keona will you know like that that's a guy that but if you have all your ducks in a row and you commit in may june or july you're gonna enroll early now i mean that's just how it goes yeah and that's good. It's good that there's some of these guys will have a shot. Dylan Rayola comes to mind, mm -hmm. you know. Very little Dylan Rayola talk today. He had the one line that he talked about his competitive fire. Mm -hmm. He, meaning Matt Rule, talked about Dylan Rayola's competitive fire. Danny Kalen, he he said, just is glued to the job essentially that he's just wants to learn and learn and learn. And they even he even talked Rule talked about. <laughs> Harburg's high elbow, his elbow. If you notice, sometimes it'd fly up a little bit. Um, so they're working on that. But yeah, there hasn't been much talk about Dylan, and that's good. I think it's intentional too. Do you? Do you? Well, I mean, like, there's already so much pressure. Why are we going to go out there and like sit there and just praise him and put him up on the uh, even bigger pedestal at this point? Just potentially set him up for expectations that are too big. Yeah. And this so I think just just let him do his thing. Yeah, the this, Trev news is kind of good for yeah the yes, Trev news absolutely. and the basketball team and the hoops yeah, yeah like no doubt because if we didn't have the Trev storyline and we didn't have the basketball storyline going on for the men's team, a lot of the the, the you, you, not, not forcing it but you'd really push the the Riola news. You would probe it a little more because you're today. trying to sell today. Like you're trying today. to sell something to fans that they're interested in today. And we, right now, fans are interested in Trev Albert's news and they're interested. In the basketball. Yeah, we would have went over there today to probe a little bit harder on Dylan. Not mm -hmm. that we would have overdone it, but yeah, you would have you would have tried to get a better feel than just one comment on Dylan. I think that's so much healthier for everybody, including the football team, when that magnifying glass isn't directly shifted over to football as soon as the basketball season. A lot of times over the last decade, that magnifying glass is already on football even before basketball. In February. So, yes. <laughs> times even earlier than that um so 100. just to have that i wouldn't say distraction but but something else to capture people's mm -hmm. attention i mean the, the trev stuff aside but just the winter sports in general yeah. and, and rule talked about that like the women's team the men's team wrestling and and just all the the success other sports within the athletic department are having i think has been so good for football because now they can just operate like a normal football team, not not the end all be all savior of an entire fan base. That's true, and also you use the word relevant. I mean, mm -hmm. it makes the athletic department more relevant. Sure, and and it did. It, I mean, come on, Sean mentioned it. Having Nebraska playing on CBS on Saturday that was a, the men. That mm -hmm. was a big deal. The women too. CBS and, and those CBS here. guys had you could tell they had never watched Nebraska. Like yeah, they, Grant Hill couldn't even say Casey's name. It was hey. I felt that who's the legendary older gentleman that calls the games? Oh, uh, Billy Packer? Or, no, <laughs> he's, he's deceased. Onions. Um, yeah, Onions. Raftery. Ra Bill Rafferty. You, thank you. You redeemed yourself. <laughs> thank for, you for Packer. Brain when Packer no, is deceased. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 anyway, I didn't think he was prepared. I don't. It's like he didn't prepare for the game. Yeah, it was, I was like. There's some things he yeah, should Yeah, like he made a comment. Okay, this is a really bad one he made. Okay. He was talking like Nebraska history, and he goes, they haven't won this many games since 1991, and I believe Tyron Lue was on that right. team. And I'm, like, and I'm like, so Tyron Lue was in grade school. Right. Good, that no, that's a really good example. Wrong and wrong. Yeah. Like that, you, you really just threw example. Lue out there on a, on just a Hail Mary. I mean, Tyron Lue was like a 10-year-old kid right. uh, when that team was playing. We don't always prepare perfectly either, but yeah, it was it was pretty evident to me that that he didn't prepare for that. 
broadcast. Well, not very CBS hard. airs a lot of Big Ten games. He's involved in those games. They never put Nebraska in those games. Right. It's always the you know even a bad Michigan team or a bad Indiana team gets to play on CBS before Nebraska does. But anyway, yeah, Rule appreciates Nebraska other Nebraska's other sports being in the limelight. One reason he says relevancy. It's we're more relevant. People talk to him about the football. Other football. You know, recruits talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. It's a talking point. Mm -hmm. All right, when we come back. We're going to take your questions in the mailbag. Abby Barmore is um, gone on a vacation, so I will be handling the mailbag, guys. So be patient with me. I'm not Abby, um, and I'll come back with more. You're listening here to the Husker Line Show. Back here on the Husker Line Show, Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett, talking mailbag time. And as I mentioned, Abby Barmore. I think she's. I don't. I wonder if she went skiing. I think she's in Colorado. Skiing. Mm. Or just a get away. She's on a trip. So um, I'm going to do, do my best to be Abby. I'm not Abby. I'm just going to tell you guys, though. No one is. Um, but mailbag You're question number one from Maurice Allen. Can either the men's and women's team make it to the second week? And well, I think the women's team have a great chance, guys. I mean, they're a six seed. Mm -hmm. So their, their path to the second weekend is to get through a three. Okay. Now, the men... Robin, on the men's side, it's what are their much more difficult. odds against Houston? Like, I think it's probably a 50-50 against uh texas a&m because a&m is really hot right now uh nebraska was the highest eight two, eight seed and they were the highest eight highest seed. eight seed so they were just right above the line to be a seven. Oh wow i know which wow crazy and then texas wow. a&m was the second highest nine seed so they were right on that line too of potentially being an eight so that i mean it's it's a coin flip game like those eight nine games sure. usually are so I mean, that in itself makes it decent odds. But then you look ahead to the next week. Houston, Houston, I think when they play, like their ceiling is probably the highest of any team in college basketball just because of the way that they defend. They are absolutely relentless. And when they are right. dialed in defensively, you will not score on them. Great. Yeah, that'll be tough. There's a good Calvin Sampson Hoiberg storyline <clears throat> there because obviously Hoiberg was playing at Iowa State when Sampson was the coach of Oklahoma, correct? Yes. Well, I'd have to put that together in my head. I think but so. That seems about right. Yeah, Samson was the coach there for a long time. Yeah, that seems like about right. As far as AM would have would have been Billy Tubbs. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't know Billy Packer. We'll have to figure that out later. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> um I would say this about Texas AM. Their ceiling's pretty high. Their floor is pretty low. I mean, mm -hmm. they but they have they have wins. Texas AM has wins this season against Iowa State, a two seed, Kentucky, two wins against Kentucky, a three seed. And a win against Tennessee, which I believe is a two seed. They have wins against Iowa State, Tennessee, and two against Kentucky. So they can play. Now they they've also had some bad losses. So they're they're and you know they're a guard or their no. best players are guards. Right? They have well, a good coach. They have one good guard, and their their front court is their strength. Is they're it? the number one offensive rebounding team in the country. They miss a lot of shots. They miss a ton of shots, and they're the worst three point shooting team in the country. Ooh, one of. Ooh. So they're a team that. It's like a mixture of Indiana and Illinois okay. in the sense that they rely on their bigs. They don't shoot the three-pointers, but they crash the glass on every possession on an extremely physical team and full of athletes. So it's cool. kind of kind of like a kind of picture, a hybrid of what Nebraska saw on Friday and what they saw on Saturday. As far as Houston goes, now they did get boat raced by Iowa State in a big 12 mm -hmm. turn. They're a weird team. That's why I say they're ceiling is as high as any team in the yeah. country. But they, when they don't bring that defensive intensity, they don't have the offense to make up for it. God, you would think they would bring it to the NCAA You would think. Tournament. You would think. No, and they're I, – I mean, I've talked to Doc Sadler about them. Doc's at Kansas sees them. I mean, Houston, in its first go-round in the Big 12, won the Big 12. Toughest basketball conference in the country. And they are, like you said, they're long and athletic, just kind of like you'd expect. Don't They don't shoot it well. It's amazing that Samson at his age still has this kind of like juice, like yeah. that he can build teams. That yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, that's who Indiana had to replace Bob, Knight, Bob Knight. Right. Rob. I mean, he was like one of the first, one of the guys. Yeah. First, mm -hmm. first. Game. I remember the chronology on that, but he was up there. Was he before or after Mike Davis? After. Yeah. Was he after Mike Davis? I can't remember. Yeah. Well, Mike Davis, then Samson. Okay. And Samson got him up to number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then he got fired for making phone calls. Too many phone calls. <laughs> Impermissible phone calls. Yeah, impermissible phone calls to recruit. Remember when that was a thing? No. Yeah. But now you're cutting million dollar checks. Yeah. All right. Let's um <laughs> take it to the next question because this one kind of got my attention. It's a good one uh, from Jason Page. 
rank and order the most despised steve peterson scott frost trev alberts peterson alberts frost that's what i was gonna say um peterson yeah. alberts frost yeah i agree peterson he's the one that kind of like the ultimate villain. started it all the downfall of nebraska and so like i don't think that there's any question right. there no you're 100 percent. frost was more just disappointing you know the fact yeah. that it was built up to be this golden boy savior comes home i'm gonna save everything and then it was just we disaster. have frost three on husker online frost three albert's two yeah, yeah. So that's what i'm saying so okay. that so trev for me is two yeah just because of the betrayal in the you i mean i i, the I betrayal. think betrayal the, the UNO that's angle the feeling. too yes with, i know it is no I, I i that's a good word betrayal cutting wrestling in football UNO still i i i add that to the and like, how he did it i mean they won the national title and he called mike denny that night that night and cut the program i mean <laughs> hey good job your program's done like in the history of history, that's never happened. I don't think. It, I would hope not. <laughs> Can't be much precedent. But they for that. were so they wanted to go Division One. Yeah, and they had it. They had to. You think you could have waited? They couldn't be in hours. three league. They couldn't be in three um, <laughs> overnight. <laughs> they couldn't be in like three Division One leagues. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, like you can't do that. I, there, was, there was something that kind of. Uh, well, we're not getting into that, but yeah, yeah. I, you know what? Rank and order the most despised. So we all agree it's Peterson. Peterson. Albert Frost, Frost. Then, then I would put Harvey Perlman fourth. Mm. Harvey Perlman fourth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like Rob said, I don't think people hate Scott Frost. It's just more like disappointed. Disappointed, disappointed how wrong we all were. Yes, that, like that era. Like so much hope was placed on him, and it just never amounted to anything. And he didn't really ingratiate himself that too. much that too. to the fan base. Never did. Never really tried. And he was like that as a player too. Sure. Like, like even his opening presser when he basically like went after it was it Dirk and just basically said, "Stay away from my family." He did go after like, Dirk. I just that was a bad move. It was a bad look. Like don't do that. Like yeah, you he don't was very aggressive. Like it wasn't at the podium. It was mm -hmm. off to the side. But I was standing there. It was a very aggressive. You stay away from my family. But he was kind of a new person in power that as a media guy, you know, he's not going to be any, going anywhere for a long time. You can't challenge that. Right. Just no, like I when agree. Polini came, he, he cussed me out a couple of times for no reason. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I can't it's new coach. I can't really yeah. like fist fight Bo Polini here. <laughs> That'd been a good fight though. I mean, are you ready? Would you be ready for that? Bo was more bark than bite. Wasn't he? Yeah. He's yeah. 100. All right. Let's uh, take it to number three um let's see come on abby this is from jordan do you think eventually the conferences get so big that they go back to regional divisions i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say i hope so and why are you saying no because they want schedule equity yeah oh. just gonna be like a professional model and i i don't think you can have equity yeah. that's good 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 point because penn state ohio state and michigan right are just going to cannibalize each other every right. year yeah and then that kind of, you know, if you can eliminate one of those games for those schools, it helps boost them to the playoffs. Who's in Nebraska's region in this scenario? Well, Who's Iowa it? was able to protect their Iowa. three main ones. They got Wisconsin, they got Minnesota, they got Nebraska. Um, Nebraska was only able to get Iowa protected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, your Nebraska's region would just it'd be kind of back to the Big Eight, back to the to the West division of the big 10, right? Is that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah. I mean, I think it would, I think it would, it'd be a nice little safe Harbor. Well, it'd be Minnesota. <laughs> it'd be Iowa. <laughs> and Wisconsin. Nebraska could use that safe Harbor, but I, I like the idea of going West. I mean, I, th I think playing those four Western teams is a good fit. Yeah, I do too. You just had a great answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Scheduled equity. Probably. It probably precludes it from happening. It probably precludes it from happening. All right, job, final question. Sean, are you loading the horse trailer for Memphis? All right, I will say Steve Sipple is the unofficial Husker fan expert of Memphis. You just went to Memphis. Yeah. yeah, so FedEx Forum is just like, I mean, literally like, I'm going to say a block from Beale Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, so go to Beale Street. It's hey, very safe. I've been asked like 25 times Where's already on Twitter, what's what's the Husker meetup bar? What bar, no idea. What bar would you all recommend? I'm going to say all of them. What's, I, I, what's the best spot I don't for have Nebraska that. fans to completely take over and plant the flag? I don't have that because I don't think it's on Beale Street, Rob. Mm. There is a bar. I will say this. I can't say the name. of. Oh, I could have a place here. I might have a place. Here we go. If you go to the Peabody, um, right, ac right across the street, Caddy corner from the Holiday Inn, 
is a nice sort of bar eatery. It's not real nice, but it's so they have bush gritty. light. Yeah. Okay. What what is the biggest like <laughs> pregame bar though for a Grizzlies game? That's probably know. the best. Yeah, thing to figure out. I have no idea. I'll do that. some research. Like what? It, I mean, there's got to be like a multi-level. Just this is the bar. If you go to a Grizzlies game, you go to before the no, game. Because in Minneapolis, Lions Pub is like the Husker bar in Minneapolis, and I tried to go there after the game uh, oh my God, Friday. on Saturday, and like you couldn't even get in the door. Really, it was packed. Not a single seat available. So when Nebraska fans have a home base. In a situation like this, they absolutely absolutely swarm it. So we got to figure that out. I'll do yeah, some research. Do some research, but I, you know, I mean, the key is you, there's a lot of places to stay downtown. There are areas you want to avoid, as Sean referred to earlier, and you have to be careful because they are right around Beale Street, uh, and you have to mind your p's and q's. I was told by a you're not walking around the streets of Hastings here. No, no, and and I imagine now I'm just gonna keep it that. If, but it, but the FedEx Forum is right close to Beale Street. So a really good setup. It's it's actually perfect. And the FedEx Forum, by the way, is a great place to watch a game. And it is really nice. There's really probably nice. 20 downtown hotels within a mile of the of the arena. Mm -hmm. the, absolutely. And you're in one of them. Yeah. Um, and I, I'd said I, I think for the experience, Rob, you need to go in the Peabody, get an old fashioned, watch the Ducks. Watch the Ducks. I mean, the Peabody. That's a legendary property. Yeah, and don't do what I did. I got called out by the lady that was letting the ducks out because they'll tell you you can you can video them with your phone, but to turn your flash off. Mm. I kept my flash on, and I got I got lit up pretty well, hard. as you should. Yeah, those I, poor ducks. I know. Now, well, they didn't see. They, hey, I will tell you this: they weren't bothered by the flash, but <laughs> they were okay. We were warm. Yeah, they weren't. What they, always we were the warm. Peabody was? Remember the movie The Firm with Tom Cruise? Yeah, and like that's where the Chicago mob when they came in. To like, that's meet. where the Peabody, yeah, that, that, that's where they stayed. They, the Peabody? Yeah, that's where the, the mob stayed. We're, I'll tell you one thing a lot of people are asking me, Are you guys staying at the Peabody? I'm like, No, well, it's got to be like 500 a night. No, I, I could have done it if you would have shared a room, but I, I didn't think that was a, a we're grown men, yeah, so we, yeah. we didn't do it. We're not sharing a room, too old for that nonsense, yeah. Hey, how much was it? Um, I could have got it for like 250, 260, Ooh. um, it's but, cheaper you know, than the media hotel rate. That's not right, bad. It would have been closer to three hundred, and I think we're paying like one forty nine for one room at the at the Spring Hill. If you would have got us a suite at the Peabody, we we do it. Well, the amenities alone would be, but yeah, having to share a room would no, not. Yeah, it's a bad deal for Rob. Let's say it. <laughs> it's a bad deal for anybody <laughs> yeah. to, for any form. I mean, you realize as you get older, like sharing a room. No, you just don't. It's just not good. Like no, no. <laughs> Like we oh. the On that note, I'm gonna moments. land. I'm gonna land the helicopter here, and, and we come back. <laughs> Please um, land it. Quickly. We're gonna take some. <laughs> we're gonna look into the Big Ten tournament bracket next. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show, and we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett, guys, uh, gonna talk Big Ten now um, in the tournament. Uh, we've hit a lot about Nebraska, Robin, but you know the, the league is is definitely set up. It appears to at least have two teams make the second weekend. Um, you know, the question is, can they get anyone else to the second weekend? Could Wisconsin get in there? Could Michigan State? Maybe Nebraska? I think Northwestern of the six is probably the biggest long shot. Um, I, I mean, it, it, I don't know if you guys agree or disagree on that, but um, you know, there, there's some intriguing matchups for the Big Ten, Rob. Yeah, it is, and what I will say is that when it comes to March, never bet against Michigan State. Like as rough as their season was this year, like this is always their time to shine. I think 19 and 14. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the record. Yeah. It's easy. Rob, it's either 19 or 13 or 19 and 14, and 18 and 13. Okay. They're overseas. So they're a nine seed. That's, and then they, they got, but they got Mississippi state, which they're just a bunch of athletes. Like they can beat Mississippi state. And then you got North Carolina who as a one seed, mm -hmm. They're not playing that great right now. So I'm just saying, like, I think that Michigan State, okay. as always, cool. is a team that as as maybe mediocre as they were in the regular season, you have to like their at least their their okay. chances to go further than maybe any team in the Big Ten. Northwestern to me has the toughest draw. I mean, is number one, Ford Atlantic's a <laughs> final four team. I know they didn't play well, but they have everybody back from a year ago. That's your first game. That's in Nebraska's is up there too. And then then you play Brooklyn. Or then you play Brooklyn against probably UConn. UConn. 
Yeah, no, nobody's Brook. No play. Nobody's, you don't play the, There's no Brooklyn. Um, <laughs> so you're playing. You're playing UConn in Brooklyn, right. which is well, which is like less than two Forget hours it. drive yeah. from Connecticut. Forget it. Yeah, UConn is a pop. That, well, they're the they're the highest one seed, mm -hmm. and they're the highest one. Seed. Northwestern won't have that many traveling fans. No, mm -hmm. and UConn will fill that arena. Yes. Really hard second round if they make that far. And I'm sure those East Coast UConn fans are real friendly. No. Yeah. How about Dan Hurley? That guy is something, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's on a roll. Yeah, he is. <laughs> this Creighton escapades and then mm -hmm. basically fighting Shaka Smart during the Big East tournament. I didn't see that. What was the deal there? Well, they're the two most animated and in your face coaches during games possible. And they were basically just trying to outdo each other about who could be more obnoxious. They're both very good at that. They are. The and a lot, it's like of, a modern a lot of other coaches do not like them because of that. It's like John Calipari and uh, John Chaney. John Chaney when they got into it back in the day. Wisconsin's got a tough draw, too. They got James Madison in that 5-12 game. James Madison beat Michigan State this year. They're a good team. Yep. And Wisconsin, I mean, they played well down the stretch in the Big Ten tournament. They did. But you just got to wonder, like, do they got enough juice in the tank to get past that game and then play the winner of Duke, Vermont, See, if they get to that second round, they can definitely beat Duke if it's Duke. I just so it's about that James Madison game. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Hey, Wisconsin got an interesting draw. Mm -hmm. They got to get back, back past James Madison. Wisconsin did start to play well. They start, they sort of earned the seed, you know? Well, especially defensively. They really turned it up. And AJ Store, Oof. he's becoming a star. He already was, but yeah. like. Ooh, He'll be preseason first team all Big Ten next he, year. He, without no, Sean, question. We always talk about NBA guys. Store looks like an NBA. He's guy. a dude. And Chucky's back another year, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's, he played well in the tournament. Feels like Chucky Hepburn's been at Wisconsin for ten years. Yep, yep it does. I think Illinois has got a exceptionally good draw. Okay, they got Morehead State. Okay, they should win that one easily, and then they play the winner of BYU Duquesne. Mm. BYU won an Allen Fieldhouse, though. They, they beat Kansas. They're a weird team, Lawrence. though. They're a team that totally manipulated the net. And, like, we're always, like, top 10 nationally <clears throat> in the net rankings. I don't know. How they manipulate the net. The, they just found a way to win by enough points. And, like, do, do, do all the things that score you points in the net. And so they're good, but I don't know if they're, they're good enough to beat Illinois. Wow, Illinois. That would... Oh. Illinois does have a nice little path there. So I think Sweet 16 is very much in the cards for Illinois, especially with the way they're playing right now. I mean, they looked so good in the this second past half. week. In the second half against Nebraska. Yeah, and then they turned it down and just completely erased an 11-point deficit and blew Nebraska out. Did they have a lot of fans there, Robin, yes. Illinois? Did so they, Illinois will travel yes. to Omaha. They had right? a lot. They did. More than Nebraska? Yeah, it was about 50-50. Like, was Nebraska like one of the better... It Overall. wasn't like fr Friday night was like, it felt like oh. Sioux Falls all over again. Like there were some Indiana fans. There's like a section of Indiana fans. The difference was they had all the Nebraska fans, but then every other fan base that was there was just like wildly cheering for Nebraska in case they Tominaga. So it was a different dynamic in the Illinois game. There were a lot more Illinois fans there and it was, it was much more evenly split than it was versus Indiana. Illinois, game. Illinois captures the imagination because of something we were talking about off air, which I, Terrence Shannon looks to me like the best offensive player in the Big Ten and the best defensive player in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. That is an amazing thing to say about anybody. Well, and they have another first team all league player in Marcus Damask, too. So, like, and yeah. uh, Dane Danger, who was like a fringe player in the rotation, suddenly is now like a key factor for them inside. Like, it's all coming together for Illinois at the right time. That's why I think that they've got a chance. They have three really good offensive players in Domask, Shannon, and Cole, Cole Hawkins. Coleman Hawkins. Coleman Hawkins. Their length. It, Coleman just, Hawkins. Their length gave Nebraska's shooter so much problems in that game. I mean, yeah. when you have they fly around a when bit. you have athletic ability and two to three inches more length, Tomanaga's shot's gonna look different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were flying around on defense in the second half and really going to the rim. It must be what Underwood told them. Yeah. Get to the rim. Well, they saw how the game was being officiated and said, Hey, if Terrence Shannon, you get the ball, go to the rim, you'll get fouled. Well, and Gary. Will get himself into foul trouble, right? I mean, and Rink Mass, Rink, Rink and Gary, and Rink, Rink's not a shot blocker. Am I no, wrong? No. no, he's a great rebounder, but not a shot. And, and Alex, not really a shot blocker. Mm -mm. No, Bryce Williams is their best shot blocker. Yeah, that was a great block he had on the back. It's become the norm. Now, do you think Minneapolis is this kind of a one stop deal where they'll get? I think it? so. Like the, the kind of like a Washington D.C. New York City. Yeah. Deal? So um, 
Andy Katz did a thing where he listed off all the teams that have put in bids for like this next cycle of conference tournaments. And it's the usual Indy, Chicago. I think Minneapolis did it again. Um, there were some other ones that didn't make any sense whatsoever. But like Des Moines. Las Vegas, I think, is going to be one that eventually gets it for at least for a year. Um, I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> so like the odds of it coming back to Minneapolis anytime soon. It's like a one out of 10 year. Type yeah. Deal. Yeah. So that the, the Chicago and Indy will probably get it most years Four out of five years. with, with a different location kind of sprinkled here and there throughout. Like, I think what you do is you rotate Chicago Indy and then have a middle team in there. Then Chicago Indy, like Madison square garden will never happen again because they had to move no. the tournament up a week. Yeah. Then big 10 will never do that again. That was awful. This event itself was cool. Like I, I went in there with really low expectations, but it was awesome. I mean, was it's, it? it's the garden. You know, and what, did you go to Washington D.C.? No, I, I skipped that. That one. was the year we didn't go. Okay, yeah, Nebraska was not very good, and uh, but the the garden was awesome. Like even the the you would walk around New York and you wouldn't even know there was anything going on. Like there may have been like a sign here and there on a street post, but like there was zero branding for the Big Ten tournament. But once the thing got rolling and you got into the second day, third day, fans showed up. And just that venue, it was awesome. But to sacrifice being that final week of the season, the Big Ten loves that spotlight. They love being the last game before the selection of the show. day before Selection Sunday. All right. All right. Well, good show. Uh, we will have headlines as well later this week uh, before Sip and Rob fly off to um, Memphis. And there'll be a shoot-around with media access in Memphis on Thursday. That'll be their next opportunity to talk to Fred Hoiberg. But we'll have one more show uh, before the guys hit the road. Uh, and remember, if you're not a member of Husker Online, we got a great deal. Uh, follow all the news with the AD search, the president search, all the basketball news. Promo code NU1 gets you two weeks for $1. That's promo code NU1, two weeks for $1. For Steve Sipple, Robin Washett, I'm Sean Callahan. <laughs>